Have you celebrated your 45 year on this planet? These are three daily supplements you want to add, not just for longevity, but for basic health with a bonus one. And you'll discover a shocking experiment showing this one supplement that beats NMN. Supplement number one. The other supplement that I take every day is CoQ10. CoQ10 has been shown to be important for staving off diseases like depression. And that tends to happen increasingly as you get older. What does exactly CoQ10 do? Coenzyme Q10, or CoQ10 in short, affect the function of the mitochondria, the power plants in every cell in our bodies. CoQ10 makes the production of energy more efficient. This means increasing the actual energy that comes out and reduction in toxins and damage that comes out of it. Efficient energy production keeps you healthy and young, and this is also very important for the energy in your muscles, especially the heart, and also tissues such as the brain, who store it for energy as well. This explains why CoQ10 has been used by cardiologists and also for reducing chronic migraines. Dr. Mark Hyman speaks about that. It's also important in the brain and migraines. Uh, it's something I use regularly for migraines, regularly for heart patients. And researchers in one study found that high quality CoQ10 supplements were three times more likely to reduce migraines than a placebo. Why is CoQ10 important for aging? Our cells create energy via power plants. They burn foods, similar to coal. This burning process creates energy, but similar to our power plants, also toxins and residues that will cause aging damage. And as we age, less of the burning process result in energy and more of that resulting toxins and damage to the cell. And coincidentally, our bodies also make much less CoQ10 as we age, hence the need for supplementation. And when you get older, your CoQ10 production declines. It declines with other things like stress, chronic stress, toxins, even medications like statins. And when you have lower levels of CoQ10, it leads to this lower level of energy that we experience as we get older, but it also leads to some serious diseases. I would take 100 milligrams over age 45, and over age 60, 200 milligrams. Of course, if somebody takes cholesterol-lowering drugs, that too may require higher levels of CoQ10. Let's hear the cardiologist, Dr. Sinatra, speaks about that. If you use a cholesterol killer, like a statin, you're gonna take out CoQ10 at the same time. I tell my patients and anybody who's on a statin, basically, you must take CoQ10 with it. And I like doses of 100 to 200 milligrams of a high quality uh, CoQ10. And only by products dissolved in oil, not powder. The studies have shown doubling or tripling the absorption. So this was CoQ10. PQQ helps to create new mitochondria. CoQ10 makes the mitochondria more efficient, while PQQ helps to create new ones. PQQ is something that you take in conjunction with coenzyme Q. PQQ, I think you can take with water. Oh, CoQ10, you, you got to take with fat, like a D3 yeah. type of deal. And this is good if you're over 45 with these ones, right? Yes. Now, as we move to supplement number two, you really need, really need to subscribe now. K2 is not very well known. Vitamin K2 will protect your cardiovascular system from calcium deposits and put the calcium into your bones rather than your arteries. Vitamin K2 becomes more important after age 50. But why? Heart and blood vessel diseases are the number one killer in our society. They kill about one in three people. The first stage of the disease is accumulation of soft plaque. Then the calcium comes and makes the plaque very rigid, calculus-like, similar to the teeth. So calcification is the second stage of heart disease and usually happens over age 50, 55, or 60. Vitamin K2 makes sure that the calcium goes to the bones and not to the arteries. So it becomes more important as we age. You're, you're the supplement experts. Would you recommend the K2 part to cycle on and off it? Or is there any downsides to the K2? Is so the K2, if you buy the K2 MK7, it stays in your system for three days. So you don't have to take it every day. You can take it like you know, twice a week. That's fine. MK7. And K vitamin K, is that the one that's found in cabbage, right? Uh, yeah, but it's K1. So K2, you do take K2 with your D3 personally, right? Yeah, but I see it. I take it. It's not like part of my strict protocol. Gotcha. I won't lose sleep over not taking it. So we covered two supplements. Before the third and last one, if you have a loved one who doesn't take them, please send them this video link. We all need our community and our families to stay healthy and young too.
Dr. David Sinclair speaks about the increasing need of NAD boosting as we age. NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and we have it in our body. As we exercise, as we get hungry, it goes up. As we get older, it goes down. Uh, and it's needed for life. It's also needed for turning on these defensive enzymes. There's a second reason why NAD is important. There are enzymes in our body that we've worked on my whole career called sirtuins that don't protect the body against aging unless they have NAD. And as your levels go down, your body doesn't fight aging as well. And that's one of the reasons you get older faster as you get older. When you take a molecule like NMN or give an NMN to a mouse, what we think is happening is that you're tricking the body into thinking that it's exercise or that it's hungry because the NAD levels will go up. We find that the combination of low calorie diets and these NAD boosters has a, a doubling effect. They're actually additive. And these animals' capacity for exercise improved dramatically. In fact, the old mice treated with NMN had up to 80% greater exercise capacity compared with the untreated old mice. And it is a very popular molecule that has been talked about by David Sinclair in the longevity community. So what are the main benefits of NAD? What is the main things that it, that it does? NAD has two levels that is being used in the body. The first level is simply to give us energy. The above function of NAD, it feeds the enzymes that repair your DNA and also the sirtuins, the one that David Sinclair researched. They eat, they consume it, they basically eat it, they move around. NAD feeds the sirtuins? Yes, yes. So the more NAD you have, the better your sirtuins will perform, the more energy they'll have. For, for sure, they, they won't be hungry, and especially as we get older, they, they get more and more hungry, and they don't function. Because and sirtuins are basically the cleanup molecules. They silence aging genes, and they, they, colla they collapse they protect the, they call it the, the integrity of your chromosome. So if you look at the young chromosome, you know, the DNA structure is kind of very tight in yep. young people and adults, it begins to become Unravel. a shoelace. Unravel a little bit, All right. Yes. And um, the sirtuins, they, they keep it tight. They keep it tight. Uh, so it, it, it stays young. NAD, from what I understand, is produced naturally in your body. Yes. And you need to put in stuff that is going to feed the NAD. Exactly. So things that you've heard about NMN, like we've heard about N no. NR, NAC, right? Those are all the things. No, NAC is something else. Different. N but NR, NMN. And uh, that niacin. And niacin. So this is we're talking about low do dose niacin. Low dose niacin is just part of the B complex. I mean, that's a, what is it, B6? B3. Oh, let me ask you this question. Is NMN going to just have much, much stronger than, than low dose niacin? Or... What's the difference between the two? There is a big difference in a sense that we, we know NMN works better on the on the nerves. So my wife, she had a stroke and I gave her NMN because of that. I want to boost uh, NAD in the in the neurons. And oh, yeah. NMN will boost the NAD in the neurons, the niacin won't. Yes, we know that there is overall status of NAD in the body, you know, just uh, just one tissue. We need more studies about NMN. There, there is a, a bunch of studies about niacin. It has been used for over 100 years. There, there is 100 years research on niacin and and it meant that there is very few data and, and i know that we don't think they speak about budgets but uh, if you don't have enough money to buy any man and you really want to buy and it all those nice and cost nothing now i promised in the beginning a very interesting self-experiment on nmn but before a little story back in 2019 i've heard dr david sinclair comparing nmn with niacin. Let's hear that for a second. You can raise NAD levels just by taking nicotinic acid or niacin. But in head-to-head in -head studies that I've read, mm -hmm. niacin won't raise NAD levels the way some of these other molecules do. Despite this stance of Dr. David Sinclair or niacin compared to NMN, based on the studies that I have read and my intuition following the research, I did decide to go with niacin, especially that it has much more research than NMN. And if you have access to my complete supplement routine since 2022, you probably noticed that as well. But you may be taking NMN or considering buying NMN. And you've heard Dr. David Sinclair speaks about the benefits of NMN over niacin. How does niacin compare to NMN in relating to NAD boosting? I wanted to do self-experiment in 2022 and publish here the result. However, my wife had a stroke and she needed the NMN much more. Thanks for Do Not Age for supplying that for her. 
However, a month ago I found a self-experiment done by Dr. Michael Lustgarten from Conquer Aging or Die Trying channel. Remember, it's just one person, it doesn't prove anything, but let's see what he has found when he compared NMN with niacin. For the first test, my baseline, this was without an R, NMN, none of that, just my baseline, 25.6 micromolar. So then I took 300 milligrams per day of NMN and it didn't move my NED levels at all, essentially the same 25.3 micromolar. So then thinking the dose wasn't high enough, I decided to go with 1,000 milligrams per day of NMN, and that finally raised my NED levels to 39 micromolar. So then I thought, well, I haven't really identified or addressed the root of the problem. I wanted to try niacin to see how that would react. My NAD level was 67.4 micromolar, which is my highest NAD level yet. So we can see that using niacin, I got my highest reading yet of 67 micromolar. In his experiment, Niacin worked in increasing NAD levels in Michael's specific body, at least in the blood, because we don't know exactly how it affected different tissues in the body, better than NMN. 600 milligrams of niacin worked better than one gram of NMN. And if we want to combat the reduction of NAD with age, we don't necessarily need to reach those high levels. Maybe 300 milligrams of niacin per day is sufficient to reverse the decline NAD with age. And this level is around what I take today. However, there is a specific way to take niacin, which you must know. The important thing about niacin is if you take it over a certain dosage, it actually- You're gonna turn red. You're gonna turn red. Yeah, no, not only that, you're gonna have a, a tiny inflammatory effect. Now, yeah. it may, may be benign, but you know, we don't want to activate inflammation and for no reason. Let's say some people take 500 milligrams and you get a massive amount of uh, inflammatory response. You actually, beyond right. red, you actually feel, you feel as if you have some reaction to something. Yep, yeah, I've had it. And, and, I, and I'm not really sure, you know, about what we know about inflammation and aging. I, I want to be on the safe side and just take 50 milligrams uh, and divide it several uh, times a day. Low dose, but that's, but that's with very little side effect, you can trigger NAD production, yes. boost your NAD levels. You want to use it to get to a separate it out. pocket, maybe in, in your uh, bag. And you know, whenever you're, whenever I remember, I just take it. So that's, that's the low dose nice. And this is, this might be a safer way to do it than necessarily, you know, like I said, like I know people who do the IVs of the NAD, why not just do this, right? Well, you take a low dose niacin, right? Yeah. Yes. Let me ask you this question. So we have this infotamine, which is B1, right? I get them all yeah. confused. Uh, niacin is B3. Why not take a B complex? First of all, the benfotamine doesn't appear in any B complexes because it's a specific type. Specific type of B1. Yeah, yeah. And, and most of the B complexes, they, they don't have the niacin in the form of nicotinic acid. It has niacinamide or other forms that are not good for NAD. This segment was taken from Project 120. The link for that you can find in the description. To clarify, I should have said 50 milligrams of niacin, not divided doses, but in separate doses, usually within two, three plus hours in between, until you reach 150 milligrams to 400 milligrams per day. And the reasoning behind that, again, is that this protocol will increase your NAD levels without overstimulating inflammatory response, which I would rather be on a safe side and not induce. This way, we're gonna gain all the longevity benefits from using niacin. But that's not everything about niacin because we mentioned today vitamin K2, which possibly can prevent calcification of plaque after the age of 50. But what about the progression of plaque? Forget about calcification for a second, the progression, the accumulation of plaque. What do we do with that? Well, niacin, besides boosting NAD, may reduce the rate of plaque accumulation of the soft plaque because we know that today what does it is the small particle LDLs, APOB, and also LP little a. Those three are responsible for plaque accumulation. Now that's the greatest controversy with niacin which has to do with its protection against cardiovascular disease. Now this is super important after the age of 45 or 50. Let's learn about that right now. Nothing I'm gonna say here is a medical advice or recommendation. You know, there is a lot of controversy with niacin. Dr. Peter Atia and Brad Stanfield spoke against it. Dr. Berg a bit oversold it. So niacin has the power to slow and reverse arterial sclerosis. 
again, not, not correct based on the evidence that Dr. Burke has provided. The truth is somewhere in between. I spent about four years researching it, experimenting with it, testing it on myself and my clients, and I read everything published since 1950. It's quite a complex molecule to understand. It works on many mechanisms simultaneously. It causes reverse lipolysis, which is probably how it reduces triglycerides so aggressively. But it can also be used to detox your fat cells. And Dr. George Yu used exactly this mechanism to detox 9-11 firefighters. And besides NAD boosting and this reverse lipolysis, it's one of the few supplements, and possibly even if you include drugs in this list, they do three different things to your lipoproteins, the test that your family doctor should measure. First, niacin increases the HDL, the good cholesterol, quote unquote, by the way, by using three different mechanisms, some healthy for us, some benign. Second, it reduces ApoB. And third, reduces LP little a. The latter is a type of extremely dangerous cholesterol carrier and is very difficult to reduce even with drugs today. For example, statin, the cholesterol lowering drug, only reduces ApoB, not LP little a, and it doesn't even increase the good cholesterol. But remember, you don't want to overdo niacin, nor should you expect using it to treat life-threatening diseases. Our expectations with low-dose niacin is getting many benefits after five, six, seven years of usage when we're healthy. It won't reverse your plaque if you have one already. Yet, similar to resveratrol, the medical research continues to view niacin, high-dose niacin, like a drug. I guess when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And the truth is, you don't want necessarily to use niacin as a drug, high doses for short term, to reverse already in-progress diseases. It won't be aggressive enough for a sick person. Not to mention that high-dose niacin would require you to use this chemically sustained release formulas that will cause liver damage. It doesn't make a lot of sense why to damage one of the most important organs in your body to treat blood test numbers. And yet, somehow, high-dose niacin with this negative impact, so it seems, won't reduce your life even if you use it this way. I don't recommend this way anyhow. And generally, you know, the medical system doesn't like niacin, nor the attention it gets. I don't know why. Gling, gling, gling. Frankly, I don't trust niacin studies conducted by Big Pharma. You know, niacin plus statin doesn't confer more benefit than our multi-billion drug alone. Let's just stop talking about niacin and move on with our lives and research. Glucosamine, this is one that's really good for joints and joint recovery. Does, you know, a lot of people start to have as they age issues with their joints. So this supports joint health. Yes. Okay. You're taking something that makes up your joints, so it's something that the body knows how to how it works. Is there any benefits related to longevity in general? It may reduce inflammation in the joints. Uh, maybe maybe it's going to help in the overall inflammation. Maybe because of the impact on the joints. Yeah. Also, a very low side effect one. Yeah, not, not a ton of things. To the useful use of glucosamine with age is not just my idea. It would seem that Brian Johnson and his team of researchers reached the same conclusion about glucosamine. In his longevity protocol, he includes 1,500 milligrams of glucosamine per day. In addition, based on recent studies, I think I've discovered another interesting, effective way of using niacin for longevity to improve insulin sensitivity and possibly affecting more the plaque accumulation. These two are very important for longevity. Until I'm set about the video and the research, I'm going to update you in the meantime in the email, not on YouTube. If you too want to get those updates, here is what you need to know. Are you a subscriber of the Wellness Messiah channel? Still, there are three issues preventing you from using my research to live longer and stay younger for much longer. One, YouTube algorithm. It controls what you see and can see. And this means that you're going to miss out on many of the new videos that I publish. I guarantee this 100%. I've checked with many of my subscribers and they told me they confirmed that they found some of my research videos only six months after the publication. Only then they could integrate this new information and new research into the lifestyle. The second problem is that there are protocols and health products that you can use to improve your longevity and health, but are more suitable for me to give you in a PDF form. And I cannot publish those short, concise PDFs with simple protocols here on YouTube. And the third problem is that you may want to get a more in-depth, comprehensive, or step-by-step -step education and knowledge beyond what YouTube can offer. 
This can only be achieved via integrative courses with series of small condensed videos, exercises, and checklists that are designed to get you results. I offer as a solution to those three problems, joining to my free new email subscription. I just opened it today for registration. And when you join, you're going to get instantaneously a PDF from me as a gift. Go to wellnessmessiah.com forward slash gift. It's wellnessmessiah.com forward slash gift. Here is what you get for free when you join my email subscription. Immediately on the first email, you're going to get a report, the newest research on quercetin. Five rules for longevity. From there, you'll get immediate updates about videos I publish on longevity research to help you live longer and stay younger for much longer. This way, you won't miss those research updates because of the YouTube algorithm. And lastly, when you register through my email subscription and stay subscribed, you're going to receive a monthly bonus. It could be longevity PDF protocols. It could be health foods that I'm using because maybe you want to improve your lifestyle with healthier foods that are tastier than the ones that you're currently eating. And another optional bonus is new longevity courses discounts, which not only allow you to grab a spot faster than anybody else, but also you're going to get discounts and prices that are cheaper than the links I publish here on YouTube. Go to wellnessmessiah.com forward slash gift. It's wellnessmessiah.com forward slash gift.